In this video, we're going to talk about the most failed CXE math question in the 2019 paper 2. So I think what the 2019 paper 2 CXE taught us was that it's no longer about swatting. Like we, we can't just swat all the questions anymore and expect to pass. We have to make sure that we're able to solve problems. Now, enough chattings. The most failed question of 2019 paper 2 was question 4. Out of about 80,000 students that attempted that question, only 440 of them got full marks. And 80%, that's 64,000, about 64,000 got zero on the question. Like nothing, nil, zero. A whole of zero. Now let's look at why that is. Let's look at the question, okay? So if you look at the A part of the question, it is about variation, see? And this is indirect variation here, where students were supposed to use a variation to create an equation and then figure out some values using that same equation. I think the problem for this one is that this topic is usually kind of like ignored, not really done. And if it's done, not really done in depth. So probably a lot of students didn't get a chance to do it. And then when they went into the exam, basically I said like, yo, I want this, we never see this yet which I think that was the real problem. So, you know, if we go down to the B question, then this question gives students a boundary. This one was kind of a surprise for me because I know that a lot of students are familiar with inequalities, but I think the problem was that this is a boundary. And sometimes they, 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 when they see the boundary, they think it's a different thing, but really it's still an inequality and we can do the same things to it. So for that one, they could have done that and they were supposed to show their answer on the number line below now i want you to look at the last part the c question and just off the bat tell me what you think is wrong with that one why do you think a lot of students got that wrong fraction 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 like seriously really this would be an otherwise easy gradient question that students would have been able to do but because there were fractions there i'm sure that this was a big stumbling block for a lot. As a matter of fact, the examiner's report said that many candidates were unable to find the gradient, probably due to the fact that the linear equation contained fractions. So we have to make sure that we're able to find the gradient in a lot of different ways. We have there we can either find it from the general equation or an equation that's not in the general form, or we can use a diagram or we could use a point and a line or we could even use two points there are a lot of different ways so you have to be comfortable finding the gradient in different ways so what do we learn from this paper I think there are two main takeaways one don't skip the small stuff you have a lot of topics that you know sometimes we might ignore them because they're saying probably that one's not gonna come this year but it's good to be exposed to everything so at least you have an idea of what so if you see it, you're not unfamiliar with it so that goes for stuff like this variations um, you have other stuff like matrix transformations inequalities uh, linear programming all of those stuff are things that we at least should have an idea of what it looks like and when we do then we can try and connect it with the topics we already know so it's not like we have to remember something different because really, for example, if we went back to the inverse variation question, it's just a form of transposition, you know what I mean? So, and, and constructing equations. So linking topics is a good idea. Two, don't swat. Spend time instead solving problems. That way, even if you see something that's unfamiliar, because you're able to solve problems, you'll figure out a way. And there are a lot of resources that can help you to do that. You know, even online, like even here on YouTube, you have videos on how to solve problems, the problem solving process, the art of problem solving. I'd recommend you definitely check those out. If you're more of like a social media person, then you can find a lot of accounts that post problems on there or regularly. Uh, you have people like Brilliant. You have this account like Minute Math. You have, I think it's his name is Mind Your Decisions. They have problems every day or very regularly, I think you should check them out. 
that can help you to build your ability to solve problems. You can even check out our Instagram or Facebook at My Math Camp. Time to time, we post problems that students are able to solve. If you want a video of the solutions to this question, let me know in the comments. If you found it helpful, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and you'll be able to get more helpful math tips, CXE math videos, and past paper solutions and problems and the whole works. Thanks a lot for listening. Big up.